You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on kinematics. The topic of this video is velocity time graphs for changing velocity motions. And here are the questions we wish to answer in this video. What are the features of a line on a velocity time graph for an object that's changing its velocity? And for such objects, how can we distinguish speeding up from slowing down? Let's get started. So let's begin by talking about what's going on here. You see, velocity is a vector, and it has a magnitude and a direction, such as east or west or north or south. When it comes to plotting directions, that's a little bit difficult, because a direction like east isn't a number. So what we do is we choose a reference frame, like we say something like, moving east is a velocity that's positive, and moving west is a velocity that's negative. And now we are able to plot positive and negative velocity. So you always notice on a graph of velocity time, there's always a zero region or a zero mark, and then there's a positive and a negative region. That's where we're going to plot eastward and we're going to plot westward velocities. Now you also have to imagine that there's probably some numbers on these graphs. So there might be a plus four and a plus two and a plus three and a plus zero, etc. And what we can do is we can plot lines or, or values at these particular numerical values. And so if an object's moving at positive four meters per second, that's going to be a line that's higher on the graph than a positive two meters per second. And then there's also negative numbers as well. And so a, an object that's moving fast might be a, a negative 4, and an object moving slower might be a negative 2. The difference between these lines above and below the axes are that one is moving in maybe east and the other is moving west. So that's what's going on when we begin plotting these velocity time graphs. Now let's consider a car that's accelerating to the right at 10 meters per second per second. Here's an animation of the car that shows its position every one second time intervals. We also notice the speedometer readings are there. We notice that for this car that the speed of the car is increasing by 10 meters per second every one second of time. We can gather together these values of velocity and time and we can place them into a data table and the data table looks something like this. Now we can take those values of velocity and time, we can plot them on a graph, and what we'll notice is that the plot plotted points line up along a diagonal line, and that the slope of the line is positive. So we can reason from this information that an object moving to the right, that is the positive direction, and speeding up would be represented by a velocity time graph that has positive slope. A positive acceleration is represented by a positive slope, and a positive acceleration of positive 10 is represented by a slope of positive 10 meters per second per second. If we did something similar for an object that was moving to the left and speeding up, such an object has a negative acceleration. And when we plot the points, we end up noticing that such an object has a slope that's negative. Now we're going to look at a car that's moving to the right and slowing down with an acceleration of negative 10 meters per second per second. Here we see the positions of the car at one second intervals of time. We notice the speedometer readings as well. We notice the car starts at 50 meters per second and over the course of time loses 10 meters per second of speed every one second of motion. We could take these values of time and velocity and we could gather them together into a velocity timetable. And when we do, we notice the velocity timetable looks something like this. Then we can take the points in the table and we can plot them on a velocity time graph. And we notice something different this time. We notice that the points line up along a diagonal line, but that diagonal line has negative slope. Now, so here's what we've learned from looking at this animation of the slowing down motion. That when we plot the velocity time values, we get a line with negative slope. Once more, the slope of a velocity time graph gives us some information about the acceleration of the object. When the acceleration is negative 10, the slope of the line ends up being negative 10 meters per second per second. Now, if we did something very similar for an object that was moving to the left, and slowing down by 10 meters per second per second, what we would notice is now that line shows up in the negative region of the graph because it's got negative velocity, but we notice that the line has a positive slope, and that's because the object has a positive velocity. Moving to the left or in the negative direction and slowing down is equivalent to a positive velocity. In both cases, though, whether we're moving to the right or moving to the left, the slowing down motions are represented by a line that gets closer and closer to the V equals zero axis over the course of time. 
So here's what we've seen. We've seen that for an object that's moving in the positive direction, that it's represented by a line on a velocity time graph that's above the time axis. And we've seen that if it's moving in the negative direction, it's represented by a line that's located below the time axis. We've also noticed that for an object that's speeding up, it's represented by a line that gets further and further away from the time axis over the course of time. And if it's slowing down, we notice that the line approaches the time axis over the course of time. Overall, we've noticed that the slope of the line on a velocity time graph gives us some information about the acceleration of the object. Now, if we look at those four graphs that we've just seen, here they are, and give them a study. They're very instructive. We notice the top two graphs show objects with a positive velocity. The one on the left is for speeding up, and the one on the right is for slowing down. The one on the left across the top has a positive slope and it also has a positive, velocity, positive acceleration. And the one on the right has a negative slope and a negative acceleration. Let's contrast that to moving in the negative direction. Those are the bottom two graphs that you see. And in both instances, they have a negative velocity. And as such, the lines below the time axis. The one on the left is an object that's speeding up, which is why the, the line gets further and further from the time axis. And the one on the right is for slowing down. The line approaches the time axis. The one that has a negative acceleration has a negative slope, and the one that has a positive acceleration has a positive slope. Now we're going to discuss some very difficult situations. For objects that have multi-stage motions, they move one way for a while and then they change the way that they move. We see three such examples here on the slide. In the first example, what we notice is the line starts out horizontal and then it turns diagonal for an accelerated motion and it goes towards the towards the time axis. So what we can say about this object is in the initial stage it has a constant positive velocity and then it slows down to a stop. Now we see something different in the middle. That's a horizontal line below the axis and then what we observe is the line changes and becomes diagonal for an accelerated motion and, and it is going further from the time axis. So here's how we interpret it. The object first moves with a constant speed in the negative direction and then at the point you see the dot, the, it changes the way it moves, and it begins to continue to move in the negative direction, but now begins to speed up. We reason speed up because the line is getting further and further from the time axis. Now for the last situation, probably the most difficult one of all. The line's diagonal the whole time, so we have some sort of accelerated motion the entire time, like a speeding up or a slowing down. In the first part of the graph, we notice the lines above the time axis, so that's an object that has a positive velocity, but we notice the lines approaching the time axis, so that's an object that is slowing down. So we say for the first stage of the motion, it's moving in the positive direction and slowing down, but after the dot, now the velocities are negative, so the object's moving in the negative direction, and the line's getting further from the time axis, so the object's speeding up. That's an example of how you take information on a velocity time graph for two-stage motions and you interpret it. Okay, now it's your turn to practice. Here's two problems that I'd like you to solve. Interpret the motion of the objects represented by these graphs. And as you do, remember that the velocity is determined by where the line's located on the graph, either above or below the axis, and how far above or below the axis it is. And acceleration is determined by the slope of the line, whether it has negative or positive slope. So why don't you pause the video, think through the, mo the two graphs, come up with some sort of description of the motion, and then when you're ready, press play, and, and we'll see how you did. Okay, for the graph on the left, what we observe is that the line starts below the time axis. It has a negative velocity, and it's flat, which tells us that it's a negative constant velocity. Then we notice the line changes, and it has a diagonal. It's a diagonal line that heads towards the time axis. That means it's slowing down. So here's what we say. Initially, the object's moving in the negative direction at a constant speed, and then it continues moving in the negative direction, but it slows down to a stop. We would say that it had, during that last stage, a positive acceleration. Now for the graph on the right, we have, a, we have um, two lines, both above the axes, and so we would say they have positive velocity. In the first case, the line goes away from the time axis, so the object's speeding up, and in the second case, it's heading towards the time axis, so the object's slowing down. So we say something like this, the object moves in the positive direction and speeds up, 
and then it moves in the positive direction and slows down. Initially it has a positive acceleration and finally it has a negative acceleration. Now we're going to finish our discussion by talking about many of the common problems that students have when approaching velocity time graphs. The first very common problem is students think that changing directions is indicated by a line that changes its direction, and that's not true. Changing directions is indicated by a line that crosses the time axis from the positive region to the negative region, or vice versa. Here's what some students might say. They see this line changing direction and they say, oh, the object's changing direction. That's not the case. This is an object that is simply speeding up and then later changes the way it moves but not changes the direction it moves. At the end it's just moving with a constant speed. Here's another situation. They see that the object, the line's moving in one direction and later in, the no in another direction so hey the object must be changing its direction since the line's changing its direction. But no, no, that's not the case. If we look here the velocities are always positive. The object's always moving in the positive direction. It just was speeding up at first and slowing down in the end. This is what you have for moving, for changing directions. The line starts in the positive region and finishes in the negative region, or it could just go from negative to positive, but that's changing direction. Here's a second common pitfall. Students interpret stop to mean something other than it is. What stop means is that the line is going to be shown to be on the on the time axis that is at the V equals zero mark. Here's an example. This is wrong. The object sees the uh, person sees this graph and says, oh, the line's horizontal, so the object stopped. No, that's just an object moving with a constant velocity in the positive direction. Here's another instance. The line, this is an object that's speeding up, and then we notice it stops speeding up, but it doesn't stop. It just moves with a constant velocity. That's not an example of an object that stopped. So here's what you want to have. This is an object that stopped. We notice the lines on the V equals zero mark. This is an object that stopped. Now here's a third common pitfall, speeding up and slowing down. Uh, that would be a line that first starts by getting further and further from the time axis and later approaches the time axis. But not this. That's not speeding up and slowing down. In both the first stage of the motion and the second stage of the motion, the object's speeding up. It's just speeding up with a lesser rate of acceleration at the end than it is at the beginning, but it's still speeding up. Now here's another example. A, a student might see the, the line first goes up and then later goes down and then interprets it to mean it was speeding up and then s slowing down. But no, no, no. That's just the opposite in this case. If you see a line approach the time axis, that's slowing down. Even though the line is initially going up, the object is slowing down. And at the end, even though the line is going down, the object itself is getting faster because the line's getting further and further from the time axis. So no, 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 that's not speeding up first and later slowing down. Here's an example of speeding up first and later slowing down. Speeding up means the line's getting further from the time axis, and we see that at the beginning of the motion. And later it's slowing down because the line's getting coming closer and closer towards the time axis. Now if you flip this graph, these two lines over, so that you had the mirror image on the opposite side of the time axis, that also would be speeding up first and later slowing down. So for all of these pitfalls, or for many of these pitfalls, what we would say is that they mostly result from confusing the rules for position time graphs with the rules for velocity time graphs. So I'd like to caution you, every time you get a graph, look at what it is. Is it a position time graph or a velocity time graph? And then load into your mind the rules for that particular graph. And if you want some great practice, we're advertising the Minds on Physics app number one. If you go to the kinematic graphing module, KG10 is just perfect for this. It'll give you a real rigorous workout on practicing speeding up and slowing down motions and all sorts of the mis misconceptions we commonly see. Well, we figured it out. We figured out how to use the features of a line on a velocity time graph to describe the motion of a changing velocity object. And we've also learned how to distinguish speeding up from slowing down. Now it's at this time in every video that I like to give you an action plan to help you solidify your learning. But before I help you out, I'd like to ask you if you could help us out. If you like the video, could you, could you press on the like button down below? 
And if you like the video, maybe you'd like to subscribe to the channel. We have a whole lot more videos coming at you. Now, finally, if you have a question or a comment, why don't you leave them in the uh, comment section down below? Now, here's your action plan. The first thing I'd like to suggest is a trip to our physics interactive section at our website. You'll see something there called graphs and ramps. It's kind of a game-like situation where you have to match a, a velocity time graph or a position time graph by building a ramp that a little ball rolls along in such a manner as to match a, a specified graph. It's kind of fun and it's great practice. We also have two concept builders we like to recommend. The first one's called Velocity Time Graphs. Awesome practice as it's all of our concept builders. And the other one's called Dots and Graphs. You'll see links to all these resources in the description section below. So pick one another two or three of these and give them a try. Uh, here's another example of something that would help you out. We've mentioned it in that last slide. It's a Minds on Physics app. We have six of them. And you're looking for app number one. There's three different modules on that app, and the second module is called Kinematic Graphing. And if you go there and you, you, you open up Kinematic Graphing module and try missions KG5 through KG7, they'd be awesome practice. You could also do KG9 through KG11 as well. That's great practice to help you solidify your learning. And then finally, if you just need a reference, head off to our website and go to the tutorial on velocity time graphs. It's a four-page extensive tutorial that mirrors some of the things that we've talked about in these videos on velocity time graphs. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I wish you the best of luck.